Flutter Talk aims to force light on the obscurity of topics surrounding domestic violence and child abuse. Common themes across episodes include bullying, child abuse, domestic violence, teen dating violence, social justice and injustices, and the enormous gap in cross-system collaboration, an $8.3 billion per year problem in the United States. We invite both sponsors and guests to our show, authors, topic experts, other podcasters, influencers, nonprofit organizations, spokespeople, victims, and any individuals who would like to publicly speak about their abuse are welcome to join us. QR codes are available for screenshots at the end of this trailer. A little housekeeping, trigger warning. There may be discussions about incidences of abuse that could trigger repressed memories. Listeners are advised to listen at their discretion. Flutter Force is a proud partner of My Pro Genie, where Lumara grants three wishes. Be sure to like, comment, and share our podcast with someone who needs it. You could change their life. Now, a little about your host, Shauna Smallwood. Shauna is the founder and CEO of Flutter Force, is a lifetime scholar in communications and psychology, a published author, and a public speaker on topics mentioned here. Shauna is also a lifetime member of the National Society of Leadership Success, Sigma Alpha Pi, and of Golden Key International Honor Society. Don't forget to grab your Flutter Flare today. Visit flutterforce.i. Oh, allow Flutter Talk to empower your voice. And without further delay, here is your host, Shauna Smallwood. Welcome to another episode of Flutter Talk. I'm your host, Shauna Smallwood. Today, we are going to take the deep dive into a topic that affects countless individuals, but is often misunderstood, the cycle of abuse. We'll explore each phase of the cycle, hear real life stories from survivors, and discuss why victims often stay in abusive relationships. Let's get started. To truly understand the cycle of abuse, we need to break it down into its four distinct phases. Tension building, incident, reconciliation, and calm. This cycle repeats over and over and over again, trapping victims in a whirl, like a whirlwind of fear, hope, and epic confusion. So first we have the tension phase. During this phase, the abuser's anger and frustration starts to build. They become irritable, critical, moody, and often the victim and the victim's children feels like they have to walk on eggshells and just trying to avoid anything that might trigger the abuser's outburst or anger or violence. And to illustrate this phase on Flutter Talk, I invite you to share your experiences in the comments below. But for this episode, I want to share a story sent in by Sarah, and I'll share it with you now. And I quote, when the tension started building, I could sense it immediately. My husband would come home and slam doors, muttering under his breath. I did everything I could to keep the peace, making his favorite dinner, keeping the kids quiet, but it never seemed to be enough. I lived in constant fear, waiting for the inevitable explosion." Unquote. Next is the incident phase, where the abuse occurs. The first phase is also abusive because it's setting up the emotional, it's a, it's a traumatic phase where they, they're walking on eggshells even for an adult is it's very traumatic to have to walk on eggshells, especially if they fear having their children feeling they need to walk on eggshells too. So the next is the incident phase where the abuse occurs. This can be physical, emotional, sexual, or again, psychological. 
The abuser lashes out in an attempt to exert control and dominance over their victim or victims. I'll read a story submitted from James, who bravely shares his story of enduring this phase. Quote, the abuse would come out of nowhere. One minute we were watching TV, and the next she was screaming at me, throwing things, and hitting me. It felt like a switch had flipped. I was scared and didn't know how to protect myself. After the incident phase, we move into the reconciliation phase. The abuser may apologize, like making excuses or you know, trying to minimize the abuse and often gaslighting occurs in this phase where they will make the victim or victims feel like they're going crazy, like the reality of what really happened is completely, you know, it's a complete illusion where they, they, the abuser will make the victim feel like they're losing their mind. Remember, if you want to go back to, into history and learn about what gaslighting is and how that term came about, just Google it. Uh, so this, they might promise it'll never happen again. They'll shower the victim with gifts or show unusual affection to win or, you know, win back their love or their trust. And that is, um, that's the phase where the victim decides that they have to consider staying in the relationship because, oh, it'll get better, right? So let's listen to Maria's experience during this phase. Maria says, quote, after each fight, he would come to me crying and apologizing. He said he didn't mean it and that he loved me. He'd buy me flowers, take me out to dinner, and be the man I fell in love with. I wanted to believe him so badly. I wanted to believe that things could go back to the way they were." Unquote. Finally, we reach the calm phase. And during this period, the abuser may act as if nothing ever happened. It is swept under the rug. Life returns to a, you know, a sense of normalcy and the victim hopes the abuse is over. Unfortunately, the phase is just temporary and the cycle will soon start all over again. And here's how, how a survivor named Leah describes this phase. Quote, there were times when things were great. We laughed, spent time with friends and everything felt normal. But in the back of my mind, I was always wondering for the waiting. I was waiting for the next blow up. It was like living in a roller coaster, calm one moment and absolute chaos the next. <laughs> Unquote. Understanding the cycle helps us see why victims often stay in abusive relationships. The reconciliation and the calm phases can give them hope that the abuser will change that things will get better. They might feel trapped by fear, financial dependency, or concern for their children, as I mentioned earlier. The society judgment and the victim's own shame can only play significant roles in keeping them in the relationship. This is why we stayed. This is the movement, hashtag why we stayed. Please include your hashtag, why we stayed, in your comments below and share your stories. It's crucial to remember that leaving an abusive relationship is incredibly difficult and can be very dangerous. Victims need support, understanding, and resources to safely escape and rebuild their lives. Thank you for listening to, to today's episode of Flutter Talk. We work together to shed light on the obscurity on the topic of abuse. If you or someone you know is experiencing abuse, please reach out to the local support services. You're not alone and help is available. Until next time, take care and stay safe.